The Daily Code Snippet. We have spent the last few videos going over the details on how you would go about writing the CSS to control the borders of an element. In this video, we will take a look at some examples so that you can understand the use of borders and see how some of the styles appear. Note we are using exaggerated border width sizes so that it is easier to differentiate the border styles. Let's look first at the shorthand in a situation where we want all the borders the same. To look at the different border options, we have set up a page where we have eight different squares. Each square has a different border style, and as stated previously, we have used an exaggerated border width. So it is easier to see how they are different. In these examples, we have also chosen a dark blue border to contrast the light blue background. Here is the CSS code targeting each square to make them a uniform size, 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Each square is floating to the left, which is why they are arranged in two rows of four squares. We have used padding to have some space between the placeholder text and the border. We have used margin to space each square from its neighbors. By stating margin first, affecting all four sides, and then margin left afterwards, we are taking advantage of the cascading, which we will explain more fully later. Essentially, the margin left of zero after the margin of 15 pixels means that the margin left will override the value of margin for the left border. We do this so that the box is aligned to the left of our web page. And finally, we chose a light blue for a background color. Here are our squares again. Looking at the CSS for the first two squares, we are showing the shorthand where we specify the width of 15 pixels first the border style, and then the border color in a hexadecimal code. The first square has a solid border, while the second has a dashed border. Now we see the code for the third square with a dotted border and the fourth square with a double border. The fifth and sixth squares are in the lower row and feature a grooved and ridged border. And finally, the seventh and eighth square feature an inset and an outset border. These images just show the grooved versus ridged, and the inset versus outset borders at a larger size for you to see the differences. Now we move to using different values for the border width, border style, and border color on each side of the element. We will look at the CSS code first. In this case, we are looking at different borders widths all around our element with 20 pixels at the top, thick to the right, medium to the bottom, and thin to the left. Our border is solid, with the same blue color as previous. This is how it would look. Take note of how the default styles of thick, medium, and thin display. In this example, we are keeping the border width the same as thick, and the same blue color for our border. But instead, we are changing the border style, from dashed at the top, and clockwise, to dotted, double, and finally solid. This is how it would look. Next, we hold our border width steady at 20 pixels and our border style as double all around. But now we are changing our border color from our dark blue and shifting into purple, violet, and magenta. This is how this code would display visually. In our final example, we show how to use the shorthand to target only one side. In this case, we are giving our top border a 20 pixel wide border that is solid and a magenta color. Our right border is eight pixels dashed with a violet color, and our bottom border is double and a purple color. And finally, our left border is three pixels dotted and blue in color. This is how this would display. Presented by Designers Learn Code.